Hi friends, today we are going to learn making bold and suggestive trees. So by bold and suggestive trees, what I mean is this kind of, uh, this kind of trees. This is bold and not very precise. So I, I say that it is suggestive. So how do we make this kind of uh, brushworks and how do we create the overall illusion of trees? That is what will be discussed in today's video and before making the trees we will anyway make the backgrounds and I will also briefly discuss about that and we will also add little interest by uh, creating some reflections and couple of suggestions for figures or animals or whatever it is. So all those things as a bundle we will discuss today and uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and uh, press the bell notification here i am using a cold pressed watercolor paper it is around 300 gsm and it is a quarter sheet uh, in size so the first thing to do is uh, to roughly sketch uh, the kind of separation between the sky and the land maybe and uh, a kind of composition on the land. I, I, I'm not clearly drawing it at this point. I'm just uh, marking the sky and maybe some something at the distance, maybe some sort of, maybe some foliage. I, I'm not 100% clear at this point. And a lot of time, particularly with the landscapes, what I do is, I just, I mean, draw some initial marks and when we do the washes and when we start adding the things, uh, depending upon what is formed on the paper, I, I create a lot of uh, final details. So this could be a big tree. Okay, so that could be a big tree. And uh, there could be a reflection or there may not be, depending upon how it turns out later. Uh, these are some sort of reminders, uh, some, some reminders to me while painting okay this is something I mean some kind of indications to me are to be used for a later point this is not a precise drawing so I am wetting the paper now because I want a wet on wet sky mainly so I am almost thoroughly wetting the paper I am using a mop brush and it is a synthetic mop brush Escoda Ultimo 18 that is the brand I am taking out water from some of the areas so that uh, there will be less spread happening later and you might get an illusion of some clouds. That is the idea now. And uh, we need to make skies. So around the horizon, I am creating a warmer sky. And I am using uh, raw sienna, a very pale wash of uh, raw sienna. Uh, it is not strong yellow. And I am applying the pale raw sienna to the ground also because Somewhere around that area, I might add some puddle of water and it, is a, it will be good if some reflection of the sky is seen on the puddle of water. So that is uh, the idea behind applying raw sienna to the land area. Now, blue color, it's probably a mix of uh, cerulean blue and uh, ultramarine blue. It's a mix of cerulean blue and ultramarine blue and uh, the paper is already wet almost uh, it is mostly wet except some places we have lifted out the water from yeah, using a tissue paper you remember that and I'm just kind of uh, spreading the color here and there so that there are some suggestion of clouds some suggestion of the blue sky etc uh, yeah some area it is good to leave some area white so I'm just uh, lifting out some of those colors Usually I don't do this. Today I don't know why, why I thought that uh, I should do this. Usually I don't worry too much about the clouds. Here also, here also, I am sure I will not be worrying too much about the clouds. I will soon most likely cover some of those uh, clouds. Okay, 
so the paper my paper uh, if i don't i have been mentioned it already uh, the paper is kept at an angle of uh, around 30 degree so if the paper is wet and if you are applying something on the top of the paper due to gravity it will fall down so that is how most of the time i do my watercolor setup so the paper is kept at an angle of around 30 35 degree or so so yeah i wanted some darker clouds or some cloud shadows here i used some grayish color but my brush uh, it was in thoroughly mixed in the in the brush some thick pigments were there so that was creating some sharp edges uh, i don't want sharp edges here because on the clouds so i'm softening it now using a wet brush okay that is uh, that's okay uh, anyway a lot of this will get covered with with the uh, the trees that we are going to make we discussed about the trees in the beginning so we are going to make trees and those trees will cover some of these clouds right i think we are pretty much done with the sky and what we need to do is we need to start thinking of the land okay so i am mixing little uh little violet little violet little blue kind of uh, to get some sort of a purplish blue uh, maybe a touch of burnt sienna because this looks very artificial for something like a foliage at the far end so this is some sort of a bluish purplish gray oh but i think now it is uh, it went little too much of a towards the darker side adding a little bit more blue to make it more bluish and on top of it okay this looks this looks good this looks good uh, like a far end mountain or far end hills of foliages etc and if you look at the the top edges little soft now i am further uh, softening the top edges so that it looks it creates an illusion that there is there are some light and plus these foliages are much far away uh, in distance around the horizon it is much far away that is a sort of illusion that i am going for now that we did the far end foliage let us bring it towards the uh, foreground so i am using uh, yellow oak no no not so, sorry not yellow oak i am using raw sienna of course you can use yellow oak yellow oak and uh, raw sienna are almost same okay for practical reasons and uh, i am adding now little bit of olive green olive green uh, so that i will start merging that olive green with the raw sienna and i will kind of create some color variation between yellow and green and yellow green probably and so that the the land looks little interesting if you use a single color single flat color it may not be interesting so at this point here i am not very clear how the land should be so when i am not sure of uh, how the land should be what i do is i apply some colors and later add little bit of textures there let us make little darker uh, darker greens by mixing olive green and burnt sienna and suggest some sort of uh, uh, tone variations maybe some bushes or some thick grasses uh, in the foreground and yeah because there should be some tonal difference when it comes to the foreground and maybe some darks around that area some sort of bushes or some vegetations uh, i think it is a good area to define some some elevated land at that point maybe some kind of a small uh, small mountain sort of things very small i mean yeah some some elevated piece of land there why that is done that way it is it is just my choice okay you can you you can i mean 
if you want to alter the sin if you are following a law if you want to alter the sin you can take all freedom to do that right now i'm splashing some colors uh, to create some textures uh, these are maybe water you could use just plain water or you could use some colors here i used the uh, uh, naples yellow color naples yellow is little opaque in nature so that i i i have seen that that is good for creating textures so little bit of naples yellow a touch of white if required and some water and you mix them and splash it. just to drop it the droplets will fall on the paper and it will create some texture okay so this this is a loose uh, sort of approach so you can always play with that okay the more you play with it the more i mean kind of undefined or random or loose it will look like and later you can add little bit of touches to add some clarity if things go too much loose uh, not i mean it goes beyond uh, recognizable i mean shapes you can correct it later maybe some grasses here here i am using a, a soft round brush and the brush actually is a chinese calligraphy brush uh, actually uh, uh, this brush helps me in getting uh, random random edges particularly and it's sort of a versatile brush soft round brush and it is a chinese calligraphy brush if you have it you can use that otherwise you can use any soft round brush so i i i like some darkness around just above the water the white area that is left on the bottom corner bottom right corner is an illusion a suggestion of water it will get more clarity when we define reflections okay these are some maybe some grasses and i i am pretty happy little bit of texture creates a more kind of engagement there some textures makes it little more interesting i'm covering with my hand because i don't want the water droplets to go into the sky area okay let us create some bush here comes our main topic of suggesting bushes or i mean trees in a bold and loose way so i am loading the brush with the green yellow green kind of a color and i'm using the side of the brush to get some random shapes i am not applying the brush in a very uh, clear, clear way i am kind of uh, sort of uh, pushing the brush in a sort of a random way so that you get some random shapes here for the reflection i am using a little warmer color i have added a tiny bit of orange to the the color of the foliage so that it looks there is a minor uh, color variation between the reflection and the main object okay these are the reflection for the bushes above and now it looks a uh, little bit more convincing like a water okay it again doesn't have to be precise there should be a suggestion when you define the reflection it there should be a suggestion of uh, the reflection being a mirror image of the object above now coming to the main uh, a bigger tree again the approach is i mixed the yellow that is raw sienna and olive green and i have loaded it onto the the brush soft round brush and i am mostly using <coughs> the brush in an uncontrolled way so if you if you look at the brush it is the the tip is not very very much pointed it is sort of little spread away and those spread away tips of the brush will create random edges so the main idea is to use the brush in a slightly uncontrolled way maybe you can use the the belly of the brush sometimes the tip of the brush and sometimes you can push the brush like this okay push it uh, push it little hard so that the 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 bristles will spread away and it will create some uncontrolled edges that is the idea look for the shape when you make these kind of trees look for some randomness in the shape of the foliage and have torn difference at the top of the tree you make it little yellowish so that you can indicate some light hitting there 
and when it comes to the bottom of the foliages of the tree make it little dark so i am not talking too much about the i mean the reflection just pay attention that the reflection looks like a mirror reflection okay so you see i am i am loosely holding the brush and i am kind of pushing it and i am most of the time i am using the belly of the brush the side of the brush and the color for the top area of the foliage is uh, yellowish green that is uh, i have mixed raw sienna and olive green and as it comes down i am adding little bit more darker colors either i am making adding little bit more olive green and or i am adding little bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue etc some darker colors get some randomness of the foliage foliage foliages get some randomness it don't don't make the tree look like a very precise geometrical shape if you are finding value in this uh, tutorial please subscribe and press the bell notification i am planning to i mean create much more videos uh, much more frequently and the much more informative videos so please do subscribe and press the bell notification if you have any questions or suggestions write them into the comment box below and if you think uh, the the tree is getting convinced by this way if the tree looks bold if the tree looks lo loose and if it is convincing please write them write those into the comment box below so i'll i'll get some motivation from your comments and the overall shape of the tree is good i'm making some shadow on the ground also and uh, yeah i'm happy with the overall shape of the foliage and the uh, and the uh, overall illusion that it created right now how does it look i mean see i don't want some that much of darkness there so i'm softening it i'm making it light with a damp brush okay spreading the i mean the shape with a damp brush now let us add some interest some some sort of interest uh, maybe it is a cow i am trying to suggest a cow but i am not very good at making cow so i am giving a suggestion okay it is at a distance so i am confidently painting it if you ask me to paint a nearby cow i will have to struggle and the idea is a cow and a, a figure and maybe one more uh, cow i mean uh, facing i mean uh, we are only seeing the back of it maybe and uh, there could be maybe another guy also another figure i am trying to i am thinking to add something in red color okay oh uh, i think i should to i have to make it little slightly taller slightly taller yeah that looks convincing that looks good uh and what else while see this is uh, something without any reference so you have to you have to visualize and add the details uh, think before you i mean make a touch on the touch before you touch the brush on the paper think is it going to be uh, i mean okay or not try to see that and then you touch the brush Uh, something at the far away also i think i think that is all fine uh something here maybe um maybe it could be some shapes or something some some black touches so the colors that i am using for these uh, these are uh, paints gray or paints gray and little bit of uh, uh, maybe crimson and some blue okay right some touches i i i think it is uh, reasonably okay i'm just giving some highlight touches with the uh, pure white these are watercolor whites directly taken from the tube and be 
careful when you do this uh, you please be careful it is very very easy to overdo it if you overdo it it is going to spoil your work so please be careful uh, yeah uh, done say i mean i have a tendency to overdo to be frank i i i i, I take lot of care when when i do this because if i am slightly uh, if i slightly loosen up I, i tend to do it i tend to make lot of white touches and then it will spoil the work okay i think we can we can finish it and we can sign it i am going to sign it now and uh, let us sign it and we can signing is a way of telling that okay this is done okay fine some touches here and there i don't know why these touches are made i just make it uh, so i i think this this can be treated as complete and uh, hope this was informative the main topic of this the main takeaway from this particular video that i want is uh, how to make these kind of uh, the bushes and the trees which are a uh, little bold and loose that is the main takeaway that i want you to have please do practice this and let me know if you have any questions let me know if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions write them in the comment box below these trees looks good now and you can see the the uh, the textures and uh, the splashing and uh, the the clouds the big tree how, how it is i mean how it is formed and the bushes and the reflection the mirror reflection and the far end figures and those things i think overall it is making sense overall it is uh, looking good uh, composition and i hope you have enjoyed this video please let me know in the comments hope you could learn about bold and suggestive trees and also a little bit about creating uh, a countryside background and uh, as we have discussed we are not precisely going for any any uh, any element everything that we did is suggestive very loose so please loosen up yourself and please paint with pinch of fun i would say be playful okay so if if you go for that approach i'm sure you will improve if you have any questions or suggestions please write them into the comment box below i'll be more than happy to come back with my feedback if you haven't then subscribe to my channel please do subscribe and uh, please also share this video to your friends who might as well benefit from this video so thank you very much and uh, we will soon come with another video happy painting until then